Hey guys, it's Chris from Cable Bullet, and today we'll be showing you how to install our handrail hinge. First, we'll cover the most common configuration it would be installed in, and then we'll cover some less common situations. Let's dive in. For our first step, we need to prepare our handrail. If we have an end or two-way post, we'll cut it at the face of the post minus an eighth of an inch. If our post at the stairs is a line or intermediate post, we'd instead cut our handrail at the edge of the post top minus an eighth of an inch. We'll take away our handrail and make our cross cuts using a non-ferrous metal cutting blade, filing down any burrs as necessary. Next, we need to determine the pitch or angle of our stairs. We have a separate video covering that, which you can find in the description or through the button in the upper right hand corner. The quick version is to run a straight edge from one cable inflection point to the other, and then to set an angle finder on that straight edge. Once we have that angle, we'll note it down for later. The handrail hinge consists of three parts, part A, B, and C. When put together, this is what it looks like. We'll slide parts A and B of our hinge into the piece of handrail we just cut, making sure that the hinge will swing in the proper direction and that the nut will be accessible. To secure this part in place, we'll measure a half inch from where we cut on the underside of the handrail and drill a one inch deep hole on center using our 5 30 seconds drill bit. This will drill into the plug itself. Now we'll tap with a 1024 tap. To make sure we have a clean hole, we'll apply a drop of machine oil or WD-40, run the tap in, blow the holes out with canned air, and tap again for good measure. With that hole taken care of, we'll drive in a 1024 by half inch set screw using our 332nd Allen wrench. Now this screw will prevent the hinge from shifting and creating gaps once the railing is under tension. Now we're ready to attach our post top. If we're on any sort of tensioning post with a 2 by 2 inch column, we'd use our handrail drill guide and template aligned with the cut of the handrail and position the collar so that the screws are in a diamond formation. We'll only end up drilling and securing three screws since the fourth would partially overlap the set screw we secured earlier. We'll drill our three pilot holes through the wall of the handrail and into the plug of part A of the hinge. For a line post, we would secure the top in place with our handrail clamp for line posts. We'll set that in place using one of the feet on the handrail and the other foot on the post top. Now we'll drill our two pilot holes, tap them with a 1024 tap, and secure the post top with our two three quarter inch screws. For the other end of our stairs, what we do will depend on what we need to do with our handrail. In the most common cases, our handrail would end and we'd construct a stair kick out. The other cases would be our handrail being installed at an inside corner or our handrail continuing in a straight section over either a two by two tensioning post or a line post. Let's look at each of those cases. To assemble the stair kickout, we'll start by sliding part A of our handrail hinge into the end of the kickout, making sure that it pivots in the correct direction. Now we need to create a pilot hole in the hinge plug by drilling an inch into the non-threaded hole. We'll tap the hole with the 1024 tap from earlier and secure this with a 1024 by half inch set screw and 332 Allen wrench. Next, we'll attach the post top collar to our pre-cut handrail section using two handrail mounting screws. We'll drive those into the pre-tapped holes using a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. If we weren't using our pre-made stair kick out piece, we would need to drill those holes ourselves. Finally, we'll insert the end cap into the other end of the kick out piece, which should fit snugly. Now we're ready to install the handrail between our hinges. We'll start by loosening the nut on this part here, which will allow us to make slight adjustments to the angle. We'll take a scrap piece of handrail material and insert it over part C of the handrail hinge to serve as a placeholder while setting the angle. We'll use the angle we found earlier and set the handrail to match the pitch. Now we'll take a 7 16 socket wrench to tighten the nut and lock our handrail in place. We're using a socket wrench with an extension head to tighten the nut through the handrail scrap so we don't disrupt the hinge. With the angle set, we'll take off the scrap handrail. We'll repeat the same process at the other end of our stair run. To get the length of our handrail, we'll measure from the inside rim of each exposed hinge plug and cut a piece to this length. If necessary, we'd use a fixed straight spline to join multiple pieces together until we meet the desired length. 
If your stair section is shorter than the length of your handrail piece, you can even just set the handrail on the hinges and scribe your cut with a pencil. We'll slide this cut piece over part C of the handrail hinge at the end of our stairs where the kickout is. When our railing is fully assembled, the tension from the cables will hold all of this together with no problems at all. That said, you can always install a few set screws for peace of mind. If you don't want to worry about this, skip ahead to this timestamp in the video. If we wanted to do this, here's how we'd accomplish it. We'll mark and drill two holes on the underside of the handrail. Each hole will be a half inch from the cut edge of the handrail and a half inch from either wall. We'll drill an inch deep going into the handrail hinge plug. We're not drilling in the center since we would hit the screw from the handrail hinge. Once again, we'll tap these holes using the same process as earlier. Finally, we'll secure each hole with a half inch set screw driven in by our 3 seconds Allen wrench. If the space we were installing this in was too difficult to work around, we could instead install a set screw through the sidewall of the handrail. We'll take this section of handrail and kick out assembly and slide it onto the handrail hinge at the other side, and then lock it into place by securing the post top collar onto the center pin of our bottom post. We should be all set to secure all of our post tops now. If our stair railing were to make a 90 degree turn at the landing, it would change our process slightly. Let's take a look at what would be different. For this section, we need to make a 90 degree turn to continue our handrail down these steps. We've run this top piece up to the face of the post minus an eighth of an inch. As a quick note, our post and level handrail are all fully installed and secured, but we haven't inserted the end cap yet. As a first step, we're going to bring in our handrail drill guide and template from before, this time setting it on top of the installed level handrail flush against the cut of the handrail. These holes will be where we'll secure part B of our handrail hinge. With our position set, we'll secure it with a clamp. Next, we'll drill our two pilot holes with a 7 30 seconds drill bit, tapping both with a quarter 20 tap before bringing part B into place. For the hinge itself, we'll make sure we've set the pivot screw in the center slot, and then we'll install the hinge by driving in two quarter 20 by half inch screws with the 3 16 Allen wrench. We'll bring in part C and slide it over the screw, making sure that part B will lie in the curved bed of part C. We'll now loosely secure this with a nut, making sure that the hinge doesn't completely lock in place. We want this to be movable, but not so loose that it moves without touching it. Now we're ready to set the angle of our hinge. We just follow the steps from earlier to finish this section. If our handrail needs to continue on a straight section, but we have a two by two tensioning post at this transition, we would align another piece of handrail at the face of our post minus an eighth of an inch. If we had a line post, we would line the handrail up to the edge of the post top minus an eighth of an inch. In both cases, we won't attach the handrail yet, but we will go ahead and put part A of the handrail hinge into this new stick of handrail. We would then follow all the normal steps of setting and installing the handrail hinge. And that's how you install our handrail hinge on the most common stair configurations. If you have any questions, be sure to let us know in the comments below or give us a call with specific questions. Start your project today at CableBullet.com.